Okay, guys. So we're going to be dealing with two kinds of equations that have derivatives, two big super categories, and you are going to use different strategies on the two categories. The first are the clean ones. They're the easy ones. Um, they're called separable, and it literally means that that you can use mathematical abilities to get all the x's on one side and all the y's on the other sides. Um, that is what makes it separable. There are equations that we're going to get that you can't do that, and you will not be able to use the techniques that we are going to. Uh, we kind of skip around a lot in this chapter. Um, we're kind of going off a little bit of a scope and sequence we developed years and years ago. So the, uh, the A's and B's and things are really kind of out of order. And I keep it out of order because I want the 6-3 to refer to 6-3 in your book. And the 6-2 to refer to the 6-2 in your book. So at least you kind of have a book resource for part of it. Um, but go with me on this. If you need to go back and see what the order is, I handed out the handouts to you in order as best I could. And I also have it on one note in the order that we're going to do it in class, and the calendar is accurate. So all three of those are going to tell you what is happening when. Remember that the calendar is done by the day assigned and the day we do something, not the day it's due. Um, okay, so this is going to be among the easier problems to start, which is good. Uh, all we have to do is mathematically get the y's on one side and the x's on the other, and that can be done by just a simple cross product here. 3y squared equals x squared plus 2 dx. If there were any points I had to take off on any of you, even little small points, so if you're like wondering why did I lose small points on the first part of that um, test, it had to do with parentheses around the dx. I had to make one of you, one of you is kind of chronic in making those little, little itty bitty mistakes. Um, hi, Yakim. Might be. No. About putting parentheses around plus or minus expressions with a dx after them? Might be. You do it like once, but then you don't like carry it. Kind of stop doing it later. A little poorly written math. Okay, so all you have to do right now, um, sorry, I forgot a dy here on the left. All you have to do right now is pre put the integral symbol around both sides. So given that the two of these are equal, we're just going to integrate the left side and the right side which is an operation you can do. If two sides are equal, then their integrals are also equal. Uh, so on the left side, the integral of 3y squared with respect to y is just y cubed. On the right side, uh, we have an x cubed over 3 plus 2x. And it's only necessary to put one constant for both sides because they're going to be different constants. I mean, subtract a constant from another constant, you just get another constant. We do need to put a plus c somewhere. Um, it's also important that that plus c happens at this stage, because that's the stage at which you integrated. Finally, you need to do the best that you can to try to make it a function in terms of x or y. Specifically here, it makes sense to make this a, term, a function in terms of, of x, meaning x is your input and y is your output. It's going to be a perfect function because a cubed root is a perfect one-to-one -one function. There's nothing squaring. Square rooting is going to be a plus or minus. And you're not going to do a radical symbol unless you have a plus or minus. We're going to try to avoid that as best we can. Uh, but this is okay. So I'm going to go y is equal to. You can put a ginormous cubed root around it, or you can raise the whole thing to the one third. I don't care. I'm just going to do a big cube root symbol right now. Um, x cubed over 3 plus 2x plus c. Uh, note that if you guys do this and tell me that this is the same, and I get people that tell me this, x cubed over 3 cubed plus 2x plus c like that, that is wrong. The plus constant is not happening outside of the radical, and there's no way to bring that constant out as a separate constant. You can't distribute a radical or crash addition subtraction. So that is the general solution because, well, the plus c. And that's what the general solution means, is that you have a plus c in there somewhere. The specific solution is going to be I give you an initial condition and you plug it in. So, capiche? Let's move on to big t's and little t's. This happens um, a lot of times in, in physics and other chemistry-related equations. Uh, big t represents in... Probably Kelvin, because with absolute zero. And uh, little t represents probably in, yeah, the SI units of seconds. So 
<clears throat> the particular solution to this means you just need to separate these out. And separation can just be a matter of adding and subtracting, getting it so that there's no plus or minus. D big T is equal to the negative quantity of T minus 70 D little t. JK, that's the wrong one. Oh, no, that's okay. Then I need to divide this over and say DT over T minus 70, which I don't necessarily need to put that in parentheses, so I won't, equals negative DT. I like my uh, variables to be first. That way, when you integrate, you don't run into U equals with negatives coming out. Um, but this is separated. Next step, integration symbol. What's the integral of t minus 70 in a denominator? Yeah, that's a natural log. If that was t minus 70 squared, we'd have to use something else because the square makes it different. You, you need to know that. that This could be just the integral of 1 over u, where u is equal to t minus 70, and du would do nothing to that and be the same. So we're kind of skipping all that and just saying this is the same as the ln of t minus 70. Jakob, that's not good enough, is it? No. We didn't have an absolute value around that because t could feasibly be less than 70. We just want to qualify ourselves right now. Um, integration of negative is just negative t, and we have a plus c. We want to make this a clean function where the input variable is little t and the output variable is capital T. Big clues that that's the thing. Um, inputs are usually lowercase and outputs are usually uppercase. It's kind of a thing we do. Another one is that little time is always almost almost always one of your inputs. Time is an input variable and temperature is a result of that. So that's another clue. Another one is that it says t of 0 is 140. That tells you that 0 is your input and t of 0 is your output. So all of those point to we want to have this solved for capital T. And we, given that it says t of 0 is 140, at some point we want to plug in and, and figure out what that constant is. We can do it at any, any point. We can, we can do it now if you want to. I would probably recommend, recommend waiting until another few steps and just trying to isolate some more of this. I do have to teach my juniors this year how to exponentiate with base e. They're not very good at it, but we're going to do that e to the of both sides. That's going to knock out the ln on the left side and give me t minus 70 is equal to e to the negative t plus constant. Still have no need to change the constant values yet. This is the same constant, but um, on this top side. I'm going to use a little of the space to the right and kind of make this more of a, a thing where I can separate this into e to the negative t and e to the pot or e to the c. That should be okay with you. When you multiply with the same base, you add the exponents. This is just the reverse of that. I'm splitting these up because what would e to a constant be? Another constant. So I can rewrite this as t minus 70 is equal to constant e to the negative t. And this is the point at where, again, Mr. Keelan and I disagreed on this. I really, really wanted that you guys, and I will make you go back and now rewrite what your constants were. So we're going to put a little c1 on all of those because now they weren't the same constant as what you just did. This is a new constant, <coughs> but it's still a constant. Okay, at this point, you're actually pretty good to go ahead and plug in your uh, t of 0. I'm going to do it right now. Plug in 140 for t and plug in 0 for little t, which makes this c e to the 0, which is just c. So constant is equal to 70. And now I can actually take that constant, plug it back in. I'm at a paucity of colors here. There, plug it back in here. And let's just make it t is equal to 70, e to the negative t plus 70. I guarantee you would not see that as the one of the multiple choice. You would probably see it. They love their factoring. They, they love it. You probably see it like this. It is possible, albeit unlikely, but still possible that they could do some things where they make your options become something, something like this. That should be times, not, not equals. And you should be okay with that, and knowing that all of these are the same thing. Which do you prefer? I mean, I wouldn't count you off if you did this. I like the second one. But they do like the rational expressions. They may even flip it around and make it e to the t plus 1, just to keep the e to the t's out there. So.
Okay, any questions so far? I'd say this is about like 40% calculus and 60% algebra. Especially this next part. Find the equation of the curve that passes through the point 1, 3 and has a slope of y over x squared at any point x, y. You guys are going to read this question a couple months from now and be totally confused about what to do. It says it has a slope of y over x cubed, um, but I want the equation of the curve, not the equation of the line. That's the part that's confusing. When you see the equation of the curve, um, you're actually getting the whole master equation, like the big thing. If you wanted the equation of the tangent line, it would say equation of the tangent line. If it was an equation of the tangent line, this would be a stupidly easy problem. You plug in 1, 3 into y over x squared, you get a slope, and you make a point slope form, and you're done. That would be the equation of a tangent line. This is not the equation of a tangent line. So be really, really careful about that. I'm going to actually write that, not a tangent line. I got a lot of students last year. I didn't say that when we went over these notes. And this is one of my notes to myself to mention that because I had a lot of students hit a question like this and suddenly just give me a tangent line. That's not what we're doing. What we are doing is it says it has a slope of this at any point. And that's another key is that it's more than just at 1, 3. This is true at any point x, y. This means that along the entire curve, this is a formula for your slope. Given that that's a formula for your slope, that's just another way of saying dy dx, which is what your first derivative is, is equal to y over x squared. And lo and behold, you have a differential equation. Can you do a little geometry proportioning and change your proportion to be dy over y is equal to dx over x squared? So you don't have to do all the cross multiply and dividing things again. Okay, this is also where you guys are going to go algebra, not algebra. This is the 40% of calculus that you are going to mess up that I don't want you to. And you're going to mess up the integral, not on the left side, you're going to mess it up on the right side. What are you going to want to tell me for the right side integral? Ln of x squared. Ln of x squared. That is totally not right. Because the right side, the left side is fine. That's, the, that's 1 over y. That is ln of y. But the right side this is actually the same thing as dx, x to the negative 2. That's just a basic power rule. The integral of x to the negative 2 is negative x to the negative 1 plus constant. And now you have your same algebra part. We switch back over to the 60% of these problems that are algebra. e to the ln of y is equal to e to the negative x to the negative 1 plus c. You get y is equal to e to the negative x to the negative 1 plus a constant. I think it's worth going ahead and for the same reasons that we did before, rewriting that as y is equal to constant times e to the negative x to the negative 1. And then rewriting the constants before as c1s. So then you have to look back at the problem and see, does it give you an initial condition that you can use to figure out the value of the constant, or does it not? This does. This gives you the point 1, 3. 3 equals c e to the negative 1 to the negative 1 is negative 1. If you multiply both the left side and the right sides by e, left side by e, right side by e, you're going to get rid of the e on the right side, and you'll just have c equals 3e. Now you get to clean this up. This is going to go in here, and the part that may already be just a little confusing is this negative x to the negative 1. There's not really a lot you can do with that. All you can do is you can do some replacement. We know c is equal to 3e, e negative x to the negative 1 is negative 1 over x. And that's a little bit cleaner to write it because you're less likely to make a, a mistake about the x to the negative 1 thing happening. You probably are not going to see it that way. You have two e's being multiplied together. What's the rule about multiplication of the same base? Uh, yes. the exponents. You'll probably see it as 3 e to the 1 minus 1 over x. 
because then you've added the exponents together. Okay, do again. This may look similar. Um, it's actually quite different because this one's a straight up cross product. Y dy equals x squared dx. And it gives you an initial condition. Integrate gives you y squared over 2 equals y cubed over 3 plus a constant. Up to you on when you want to substitute. I'd probably just get the y squared by itself. And you have 2 thirds x cubed plus 2 times a constant is just another constant. I'm going to go back and call that c1. Now I'm going to substitute. 4 is equal to 3 cubed over 3 is 3 squared times 2 is 18 plus constant, or c is equal to negative 14. So you get y squared is equal to 2x cubed over 3 minus 14. I would leave it like that. You're not going to do yourself any favors by doing a plus minus radical. You're also not going to do any favors by isolating the x, although you could. You could isolate the x a lot easier here because you wouldn't have to do a plus minus. The clue that you're not supposed to do that is because it gives you an initial condition, y of, zero, y of x, y of an input value. And it also starts with dy dx instead of dx dy. How do we know? What? Oh, yeah. How do you know like, you can just leave it? Because if I did, if I tried to get the y by itself, I'd have to use a plus or minus, and that's considered poor notation um, because it's not quite function. The, the square notation does the same thing, and it's a lot cleaner looking. So this is okay. It's like this is sort of like it's the best you can do. So okay, next um, let's do one that's a little bit trickier. Sometimes it's helpful at the start just to kind of diagram out and say what's your input variable and what's your output variable. This should clue you in as well as that. R should be your output and S should be your input, which is sort of reverse alphabetical order. So that's why it's helpful just to keep it where it is. And you can even put the order pair down 0, 0 so you know that's, that's what you're showing. But it's, it's more just to establish what input is and what output is. Um, it doesn't change how you integrate because all you need to do is separate these. And the separation happens, this is the 60% of this, that's algebra. We want to make this e to the r and then e to the negative 2s. So I can divide both sides and get dr over e to the r equals, and this just to, for symmetry purpose would be the same as ds over e to the negative 2s. This is again one that you're going to kind of mess up a little bit. So I'm going to rewrite this whole problem a little bit, little bit cleaner. Oh, sorry, that should be e to the positive 2s. If I write it like this, um, you're inclined to do lns again. Don't do those. The only time you can do an ln is if it's just a singleton on the bottom. It's a simple u that you can do. And I can't let u equal e to the r without having a lot of complex du is equal to er. Where does that cancel and all that? That's not the integration technique here. Jakob, what do we do here? What? You do find the integral. But how? Come on, Mr. Brooks. <laughs> what if I write it like e to the negative r dr equals e to the negative 2s ds? And what's the integral of e to the something? What's the derivative of e to something? E to something. The same should be true of the integral. We just have to keep track of the chain rule parts of that, that piece. This, the integral of this is going to be e to the negative r, uh, but then technically divided by negative 1. I'm going to put over negative 1 so you can kind of trigger that chain rule part that happens when you go the other way. Um, and the integral of the right side would be e to the negative 2s, but over negative 2. Still have plus c. Now, you have a decent amount of work to do to clean this up. 
We want to get the R by itself, and we want to do this as completely simply as we possibly can. So a couple of things you can do. Um, we have a negative. I'm going to multiply both sides by a negative 1 and clear that. I'm going to do this very carefully. Is this the last problem? Mm -hmm. Do you have a back page, or is that the back page? Uh, it's the back page. Okay, and I'll try my best to try to keep this somewhat aligned to where you are. I may fail. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1 and get e to the negative r is equal to uh, e to the negative, well, let's do 1 half e to the negative 2s. Uh, minus c, or should we just do plus c and then change everything? Ah, I'm changing. I always like to keep my plus c's as simply as possible. It's going to be okay, Kubo. Um, how do you undo e to the, what do you do to both sides to get rid of the base e? ln. So I'm going to do ln of e to the negative r equals the ln of 1 half e to the negative 2s plus constant. This means negative r is equal to, actually we can do this, we can just make it r equals negative ln of 1 half e to the negative 2s plus constant. And then you have r by itself, but we still have our initial condition. Um, it's going to help you figure out what c is and if that's going to change anything. So uh, r is 0 when s is 0. Or, yeah, when s is 0, so this is negative ln of 1 half e to the 0 is just 1 half plus constant. Okay, multiply both sides by negative 1, gets rid of the negative. Exponentiate both sides with base e makes this 1 is equal to 1 half plus c. Or c would be 1 half. So then we get to plug this back in. Yeah, I'm going to fail with the space here. Um, but let's put that back into this step. So I have negative natural log of 1 half e to the negative 2s plus 1 half. Which is good enough, kind of, but let's do better. Wait, how did you go from 0 equals negative ln to 1 equals... Would you agree with me that the negative in front of the ln doesn't matter? Yeah. Okay. Then if I do exponentiate both sides base e, I get oh, e to the okay. 0 equals e to the ln of 1 half plus c. Negative. Okay. See it now? Yeah. <laughs> wow. C is in where Catwoman. Go? Where the what? Negative zero. Uh, if you multiply both sides by negative one, the zero takes care of it. But the C, we made it positive. So when you make it negative again? No, we're, we're kind of operating off of the C right here. I mean, I'm, I'm going entirely from that step, so it doesn't matter what happened earlier. C1 was the one that, that we did that with, so it's not. we're not solving for C1, we're solving for C. What do we change from C1? Oh, yeah, yeah. At the point that I multiply both sides by negative 1 and cleared. Okay. okay. Um, what I would do here, and this may happen, is you may see this written actually as e to the negative 2s plus 1 over 2. Reason being, um, if you actually think about your log rules, this is the same thing as the natural log of 2 over e to the negative 2s plus 1 without the negative in front. Because this negative coefficient can become a negative exponent and flip the fraction. Which means that this could be written as ln of 2 minus the ln of e to the negative 2s plus 1. And that could be sort of a final version of an operation and a few other things. So I, I just want, want you to see that because that's considered to be a little bit more simple since you don't have so much going on inside the ln. It's like if you have a factor that you can pull out and do it, because ln of 2 is just a constant value you could look up. Okay, that's it. So if you're reading that